Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. These stories of corporations and businesses exploiting children for, for cheap labor, labor to maximize their profits are, are just appalling. So I've learned digging into this that after HHS and the Office of Refugee Resettlement places an unaccompanied child with a sponsor, often a family member, that the legal authority for HHS ends. But uh, as Congress provided in the last appropriations uh, bill, we've given extra money to, to ORR to, to do better, to, to begin to allow uh, HHS to provide post-release services to all unaccompanied children. And HHS has set a goal to do that for all children by 2024. I'm pleased that OR has doubled the rate of children receiving such services from fiscal year 21 to 22, and Congress now needs to needs to monitor the progress here. When you when you say uh, that ORR will provide post-release services to 100% of unaccompanied children, what does that mean in practice, and what kind of services and support can children expect to receive? Congressman, first, uh, I want to thank you for making it clear. I mean, it is tough to do work when you don't have the legal authority to do more. Uh, we would love to do everything we do while we have the child in our custody. But once we release that uh, child in, into the hands of a vetted sponsor, we lose that custodial responsibility. And so if Congress wishes to give us more responsibility to, to watch over these kids even after they have been assigned to a sponsor, please. Go right ahead, because everyone cares about the uh, care of these kids. What do we do? Uh, what does it mean to have post-release services? And again, these are mostly all voluntary, because we don't have authority to actually require kids or the sponsors to respond back to us. But we do well, well uh, child checks. We want to make sure that they're OK once they transition out. So we make an effort to call them. The kids and the sponsors are under no obligation to answer the call or return the call. We also provide services to those who may be in need of particular social services, mental health services, educational services. So we'll try to do post-release services there. All of that is principally contingent on Congress giving us the funding to do that, because that's not the core activity that you've given us money to do. If you institute the cuts that I see the House is moving towards, it would devastate our program, not just to provide post-release services, but just to do the basic work of caring for these kids in our centers, in our licensed facilities. So these post-release services, they're, they're wellness check-ins where you call and, and it's Correct. really up to the sponsors and the children to, to weigh in. Can, can we do better on that? Do you, do, do you prioritize in any way? Some, some of the unaccompanied children uh, don't go with a parent or a family member. Does that, does that kind of raise the bar for, for those check-ins? Yeah, we're always looking for ways to provide better care. Remember, these are kids who are coming to us, many suffering from a great deal of trauma. And so we do everything we can while they're in our care. And we're trying to do everything we can, even after we lose custody of them when they are with their vetted sponsor. Uh, so we're constantly looking for ways to do that. One of the ways we're doing that, especially on labor exploitation, is working with the Department of Labor through a, a formal memorandum of agreement where we will try to each share information so we can track if someone, an employer, is being abusive and if there's a child who may be the subject of abuse in labor. Does this include legal services? Because these children now are often, they're going into the immigration service, or if there's a case of child exploitation, those attorneys or advocates are, are kind of their, their, their best uh, hope for, for justice. Does this include legal services? It does, and it, uh, we are under statute uh, required to provide it to certain individuals. So if a child has come to us and we have information that the child was being exploited, sexually exploited, for example, before coming into our care, we are required by law to make sure we provide follow-up services. But we try to provide those same kind of follow-up services, even to children that by statute we are not obligated to do so, because it makes sense. And so one of those areas is uh, uh, legal services. How far? It depends on how much resources you provide us so we can extend that service to them. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And I think it, it should go said to uh, all of the, the the folks across the country who are taking care of children, whether they're in uh, group homes, they're counselors, 
I've visited, uh, I've visited churches in my district who are, are the, the trusted uh, care providers for these unaccompanied children before they're, they're uh, released to their sponsors. And I just want to say thank you to, to all of the folks who are working uh, to keep kids healthy and well. Thank I'll you. take that back.